Okay, you've already clicked on this video, so you have seen the title. Yes, this is my rendition of the old-fashioned coffee cake recipe from LA Schools from 1954. Now, when you click on the recipe link in the information box, it is going to take you to the recipe. I'm going to put my rendition of the recipe on top and right below that will be the original recipe from 1954 and in its own writing and how it was written, okay, and the directions. So you can choose which one you want to follow. Mine, I added some pecans and a few little twists or tweaks to, the, to the, some of the ingredients in the recipe. If you went to a school in LA Unified, you probably are already giggling or thinking about some of the um, memories that you have that this coffee cake is going to pop up. You probably remember the smell wafting over the school. You remember what you would do to somebody if they asked you for a bite. Yeah, I, I know. I already know what kind of memories you're having. I got the same ones. They used to release this recipe every year in the LA Times and at some point they stopped. So I managed to get my hands on the original recipe and I'm going to share it with you today. So here's my rendition of the old fashioned coffee cake recipe from LA Schools. All right guys, first we're gonna start off by making our topping. This is a totally different topping from the original recipe. This topping is all mine. <laughs> and I like pecans, so I'm gonna add some pecans to it. If you don't like pecans, you can certainly do walnuts. So I just chop up a cup of pecans and I'm gonna put them in a nice hot pan. I'm just gonna to toast them up to let those natural oils release. When you're dry toasting these nuts like this or any type of nut, it doesn't take very long and you kind of want to keep them moving. I have the pan over about medium heat and it only takes about three or four minutes. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to start measuring out my all-purpose flour. And so we're just going to put that in a bowl and then we're going to add our other ingredients. Now we're just going to add our pecans to the bowl and then we're going to add our granulated sugar and our light brown sugar. And don't worry, the exact measurements for this entire recipe will be found at gdseasoning.com. Check the links below. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some salt. That's kosher salt, to be exact. And then I'm going to add some cinnamon. A whole teaspoon of cinnamon goes in. And then finally, we're going to add some melted butter. And we're just going to pour that in. And then we're going to take a fork and give everything a nice stir until you have this nice crumble mixture. I like to make the topping first because I don't like to have the batter. If you do the batter first, then you have the batter sitting around waiting while you're trying to make the topping second. So I love to do it first and then I set it aside. And then I get started on my batter. So with the dry ingredients, we got some cake flour, baking soda, and baking powder go in. Then I'm going to add some granulated sugar. And then next we go with some light brown sugar. And yes, I am running all of this through the sifter. Um, because brown sugar can get some lumps in there and so I kind of like to run everything together through. You can do it one at a time if you want and that was some cinnamon that I added. Then I'm going to add a pinch of salt and some nutmeg. and just going to run all of that through the sifter. Now I'm using fresh ground nutmeg here. I'm having to grate it over a microplane. If you don't have it, don't worry. You can always use the pre-ground nutmeg. It's not a problem. Remember what I said earlier, you don't have to run everything through the sifter if you don't want to. You can leave out the granulated sugar, that's not a problem. But I would definitely run everything else through there just to make sure it's well incorporated and nice and aerated. And another thing, depending on the size of the holes in your sifter, your kosher salt may not come all the way through the hole, so you may just have to turn it over and pour it on top of the dry ingredients. Moving on to our wet ingredients. So we have some buttermilk. Then we have some eggs that we're going to add together. We've got three eggs in this recipe. And then we do have some vegetable oil. It's also going to add moisture along with the buttermilk. And you're going to whisk everything together. So see, this coffee cake comes together pretty quickly, pretty easily. We already did our topping. It's waiting on the side. We've done our dry ingredients. Now we're finishing up our wet ingredients. And we're just going to pour the wet ingredients right into the dry. And you don't need a hand mixer. All you need is a good whisk and you can do everything by hand. I'm mixing this batter together in real time so you can see how fast this batter comes together. It doesn't take a lot of time. 
I didn't cut this part because I wanted you guys to see how fast or quickly that this batter comes together with a few good whisks. Right there, that's it. It came together for me really quick, no lumps. And that's all I was checking for, making sure I incorporated the sides. And it's done. So then we move on to our glass nine by 13 pan. And that's what I'm using for this recipe. I'm taking some baking spray and I'm just gonna coat the inside of the pan really well. Check it again, right there. I've used other baking dishes to make this recipe and a glass dish is much better for the turnout or the end result. Trust me, I've used aluminum and I didn't like how the sides turned out. It seems like the sides cooked more um, than I needed them to, even with the cooking time being what it was. So I didn't care for that particular turnout. So I stuck with a glass dish and that's the best result I can give you for this cake. So now we're just gonna take our topping and we're going to make sure we put it over every little surface of the coffee cake. Take your time and make sure you get the sides and the corners really well because those are the parts that can sometimes go neglected when you're baking a coffee cake or something like this with a topping. Get those corners and those sides really good. So we've covered all the surface of the coffee cake batter with the topping. And now we're gonna bake it in the oven at 375 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes. Actually, 33 minutes worked for me exactly. And when it comes out, it looks like this. Now, I only let the coffee cake rest in the dish for about 10 minutes or so before I invert it. So I take a towel, and don't use a towel, use pot holders because you're gonna lose some of the topping when you invert the cake. Once you invert it, very carefully, if it's easy for you to touch the glass, go ahead and slowly take the dish off just like that and let the steam continue to release from the cake it's going to cool down we're going to invert it one more time right side up and there you go all right so we got our cake made and here comes the great news this coffee cake can be cut up to 18 pieces so if you guys were looking at the batter saying, oh, that's a lot, or if you're looking at the topping, oh, that's quite a bit. Um, yeah, you're right, because this coffee cake is going to feed up to 18 people if you cut it right. So we're gonna cut it in half, and you can cut it in three sections, or you can cut it in half, which is gonna give you much bigger pieces. But I'm gonna go with a three by three, so I'm gonna cut it in thirds. Here we go with the first column. Then we're gonna go with the second column. And then you're gonna turn them around and you're gonna cut them in threes again. And there's your nine pieces. If you do that to the other half, you've got your 18 cut coffee cake. Also, I'm using a serrated knife because not only does it glide through that crunchy topping really easy, but it helps give us much more clean cuts on the coffee cake. Since I'm calling this a back to school recipe, I really want you guys to check out my most favorite back to school commercial ever. It's from Staples. It would so be me if I was a parent. Um, I just, it just makes me laugh to this day. This coffee cake is great. It's nice and fluffy. It has a great crunchy topping. And best of all, it's going to bring up some great childhood memories. For these recipes and more, go to gdseasoning.com. I'll see you guys next time. Enjoy.